Do people travel to the Philippines that are losers? I would say that people that say that, A, are either not very well informed, or B, they have a defensive mechanism. Often it will come from women, because the one thing you will hear a lot of exes say about their husband with a Filipino wife is it's a trophy wife. It's, it's the Western bitterness that comes out of people. You will see a lot of negative stuff about guys in the Philippines, but you will also see very little on the positive stuff. When you look at a newspaper, how much of it is good news? Very, very little. Almost nothing. So when some foreigner gets killed somewhere doing something, that's big news. But the other 20 people that got married and lived happily ever after doesn't even get a mention. That is the reality. Are there a lot of strange people in the Philippines? Of course there are. Expats are often um, extroverts. They're a bit different. They do their own path. That's why they are not doing a 9 till 5. It's why they're not locked into a marriage that 50% of the population of the UK want to get out of. They're not locked into a marriage because they cannot afford to separate because their house is too expensive and neither can afford to lose their accommodation. And neither of them could afford the fact that if they separated, even if they went 50-50, they couldn't even afford a deposit on a new house. So reality is, most of these guys are fairly independent. Are there some strange people? Of course there are. There's a lot of people that look for a new life, a new way of life. Um, you'll find people that have divorced in the US and headed east. You, you'll find people that um, have a lot of mental health issues, which is one of the groups I don't recommend should go to the Philippines unless they are competent enough to look after themselves because I think a lot of these people are the high percentage of people that end up dying. Um, be it killed in a robbery, be it mugged, be it a bad wife, be it whatever, I think they have a larger percentage in the expat population of risk to themselves. The reality is, though, there is a lot of good people out in the Philippines. A lot of good people that are generally just expats, globally. The bad people you will read about, the good people you don't hear about. It's like you will hear about a train crash, but you will not hear about the 200 train journeys before that crash occurred since the last incident, or even thousands of train journeys, because they're not interesting. It's not a story to be written. It is not going to sell newspapers. That is why when somebody goes, oh, it's losers that do this, and blah, 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 it's often just a reaction looking for something negative. The whole point that I find is you need to work things constructively. If you're going to say, are they all losers? Ask the question, how many do you think are losers in the Philippines? I would say you'd have to define what else would they be doing. The There's a recent guy that has fallen fouler problems in the Philippines. He was originally homeless in the US. Is he better off in the Philippines? I don't know the social system in America, so I cannot comment. Do I think he should be in the Philippines personally? The answer is no. Do I think he's a prime example of the average expat? I would say no. But this is why you need to be very careful on how you define people. Also, the fact that it's instantly, these guys are losers, you're missing the point of why they're actually there because you haven't actually engaged to find out because what happens is people like me just simply shut you down. We're not interested in justifying what we do. We do it because we want to do it, and that is simply it. We do not need to justify to anyone else what we are doing. We don't have to turn around and say, oh, I need your praise and a letter of um, congratulations. We're doing it because it makes us happy. We're doing it because it's where we want to be, what we want to experience, and traveling around is a way of life that many people are, are doing more and more. There is a lot of people relating working around a laptop, and why not? If you can do it, why not? Um, lately, I've started getting into English teaching because I can utilize it in Spain, I can utilize it in the Philippines, France, Germany, wherever. Because the fact is, if you're teaching, then there's a market for it. 
also is something to fall back on. This is why I recommend doing something like the papers related to TESOL, but look at which ones are worth bothering with. Because if you're doing online teaching, the basic one's going to be enough. But if you're looking at going to teach in a university or something, you're going to need a bit more than the uh, basic certificate to get you through the door. It all depends on what you're doing. But I would say that there's a lot of expats that I would not sit and drink with. There's lots of expats I do not associate with. But at the same time, I do not judge them for what they do because I do not know them. Um, some of their politics, etc., do not fit in with the way I see politics. The same with their some racism, etc. But then again, go to Facebook. It's got more racism on that lately than I've seen anywhere else on the planet. Thanks for watching.